An important topic in chemistry is acids and bases, and we're going to look at two definitions of what an acid and a base is. The most important definition, the first one, the one we're going to focus the most on, is the Bronsted-Lowry definition. And in that system, an acid is a chemical that donates a proton, an H+. And a base is a chemical that accepts an H+. So, for example, HF, hydrofluoric acid, can donate a proton to the water. If we add an extra proton, H plus, to H2O, we'll make H3O, and the charge will no longer be neutral, it will be a positive one. And what's left behind on hydrofluoric acid is the fluoride anion. So we have an acid reacting with a base, and if you look at the product side of this reaction, to explain the reverse reaction, we can also show that hydronium, H3O+, is an acid, and fluoride is a base. Whenever you see H3O+, you can think of that as the same thing as H+, aqueous, because an H+, paired up with water, is equivalent to H3O+. The other definition that we're not going to use as extensively as Brown said Lowry is the Lewis definition. And in this system, a base is a chemical that donates a pair of electrons, and an acid accepts a pair of electrons. So for example, if I have the acid hydrochloric acid and I put this into water, the lone pair of electrons on the oxygen are attracted to the positive hydrogen in the hydrochloric acid. These two electrons can make a new bond with the hydrogen, but remember, hydrogen can have a maximum of two electrons around it, so we have to break this bond and turn those bonding electrons into non-bonding electrons. In other words, the Cl- gets separated from that H+, which is now connected to the water, which is now... A hydronium. When you have acids and bases, you can classify them as either strong or weak, and the difference is how much they react. A strong acid or base is one that reacts completely. A weak acid or base reacts less than 100%. These are the six common strong acids. So if a chemical is an acid and it's not on this list, then it must be a weak acid. Strong bases are group 1 or group 2 cations paired up with hydroxides. So for example, sodium hydroxide, magnesium hydroxide. And you can have a group 2 cation paired up with an oxide, like calcium oxide. Because when calcium oxide is put into water, it forms calcium, but the basic part is the two hydroxides. So whenever you have a strong chemical reacting, you write a single arrow, which means the reaction is complete. If the chemical is weak, acid or weak base, then you write an equilibrium set of arrows showing the reaction is not complete. So here's another example. We have acetic acid. Acetic acid is definitely an acid, but it's not one of the six strong acids. So because it's weak, we write an equilibrium set of arrows. The acid is always the chemical that donates an H+. So if I draw that arrow that represents a transfer of the H+, to the water, I have to figure out the products. One of them will be the water turns into hydronium, and the acetic acid, we rip off the H+, we're left with the acetate anion. Kc for this reaction is called a Ka for acid. If we were talking about a base reacting with water, we could define a Kb. Ka, products divided by reactants, so we have hydronium to the first, times acetate to the first, divided by acetic acid, and remember, pure liquids do not show up in K.
the larger this equilibrium constant is, the stronger the acid is. And if the acid had been a strong acid, like hydrochloric, the Ka is infinitely large. You can look up Ka values, for example, hydrofluoric acid, weak acid, Ka is 3.5 times 10 to the negative fourth. Or, sometimes you'll do a little math manipulation on this, and instead of using the Ka, you'll see pKa's. P just means take the negative log of whatever comes next. So pKa is the negative log of Ka. The negative log of this constant is 3.46. And the way that the math works, the smaller the pKa value, the stronger the acid. So larger Ka equals stronger acid. Smaller pKa, also stronger acid.